Next week, I'm going to be preaching about catching fire and a divine determination. So, just look forward to next week. But today, we're going to be speaking about catching fire and the main thing. The main thing. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to keep the main thing. The main thing. you got to keep the main thing. The main thing. You met? All right, Acts chapter 17, verse 5 and 6. But the Jews who were not persuaded, becoming envious, took some of the evil men from the marketplace and gathering a mob, set all the city in an uproar and attacked the house of Jason and sought to bring them out to the people. But when they did not find them, they dragged Jason and some brethren to the rulers of the city, crying out, These who have turned the world upside down have come here too. Say that last line with me. These who have turned the world upside down have come here too. May God add a blessing to the reading of His Word. The Holy Spirit, I pray that You would put me on like a glove. And that every word and every action that I do, that it would be directed by You. And Holy Spirit, we pray that You would ready the hearts and the minds of those who are receiving the Word of God and let it be uh, an eternal seed. We know that Your Word always accomplishes what You sent it to do. And we, we believe that today. And we thank You for that, Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Well, over the past couple of months, we've been talking about this rapid spread of the gospel. How it was influencing and impacting uh, not only people's lives, but whole regions and cities uh, from Jerusalem all the way into Asia Minor, all the way uh, to uh, what we would consider Czechoslovakia. And the early church, as you just read and we just repeated, is turning uh, the people in the synagogues, the people in the marketplaces, uh, and the Jewish theology is just turning it upside down as they began to preach that Jesus was the fulfillment of the Messiah. And that was such a, a radical concept, such a, a radical thing that it began to disturb church as usual. Now, you might think, well, it would be good to shake things up uh, and disturb church as usual. And, and I would agree with you, but when we actually do it, let's see how uh, upset you might get. Because we do have traditions and things that we get so used to that if we don't do it, uh, we feel like we've missed something. Yep. Uh, and sometimes the Holy Spirit just desires to come in and move in a totally different way. And to do a totally different thing. Just a, a few weeks ago, those uh, not a few weeks ago, this past Tuesday, uh, as we came together in prayer on Tuesday night, and usually we, we gather up here together in a circle and we begin to pray for each other. Uh, and we only got uh, to pray for one person. And then the Holy Spirit just come in and shook it all up and changed it all around and came down in a mighty way. And we're not complaining about that, but it did disturb church as usual. What if God was to come in here uh, and just begin to catch something afire and uh, change a church as usual? Are we ready for that today? Look at your neighbor and say, are you ready? You see, these radically saved people, radically saved people uh, do something in the kingdom of God. Can I get an amen? amen. And, and they're, they're radically saved and they're passionate and their influence begins to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in unprecedented ways. And lives, here's where it's at, folks. Lives are being altered and changed and destinies are being changed as a result of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You see what we did yesterday through song, through puppets, uh, through just uh, talk, walking and talking to people as the, way the gospel which is inside of us uh, it is altering people's lives and changing people. Do you believe that this morning? And so it began to change people in life-changing ways. The, the, the gospel, as we put it, began to catch fire. Uh, and and uh, that's how we describe it throughout these, this series. Every time the gospel was preached, every time 
someone was healed. Every time someone was delivered. Come on, help me. Every miracle, every new testimony was an ignition point that just caused the fire to keep going and to keep spreading and to reach new areas and new cities. And I believe that's what we need in our modern day. Because I could have made that. You see, the new, new church, though, even though it was growing and it was spreading, it was not without opposition. How many knows that we face opposition in this world as well? Yeah. Yeah. Tests and trials. But as a testimony to this new church, it did not let the fire go out. If you don't tend to a fire, it'll go out. Yeah. Amen? How many of you good uh, Boy Scouts learned how to start a fire? But, but if you just start the fire and you don't uh, tend to the fire or add some wood to the fire or stir the coals up or uh, blow upon the fire, then it's just going to dwindle out. But, but the gospel and the fire uh, that, that Jesus lit on the day of Pentecost, it wasn't meant to go out. And no matter what kind of opposition the church faces, I believe the fire is going to continue to grow and to get hotter. Give the Lord a big clap of praise. The question we have is, how could this fire keep going like it was going? No, you see, I don't think we have much excuse today for not spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. I mean, we have modern technology, printing presses, social medias, modern, tra modern transportation, all avenues that we can uh, spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. But the new church had none of that. But yet it was, here's where it is at, folks. It was a personal testimony of what God had done in their life. Not just a head knowledge uh, about the Bible or about who Jesus is, but a heart knowledge and an experience uh, and an empowering of the Holy Spirit that just rips from, uh, well, that's good English, that just reached from a life to life and set a fire. Yeah. Praise the Lord. You'd never know I have a college education at times. <laughs> wretch. It wretch from people to people. Amen? <laughs> Today we're going to go into the book of Acts a little bit further. Acts chapter 19, if you have your Bible with you. Acts 19, verse 21 and 22. When these things were accomplished, what does that mean? That means God was doing something. He was moving. People's lives were being changed. More and more people every day were coming to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Being filled with the Holy Spirit. Miracles, signs, wonders were happening. Uh, when these things were accomplished, Paul purposed in the Spirit. Say that with me. Paul purposed in the Spirit. We're going to go with that in just a little bit. When he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia, going to Jerusalem, saying, After I have been there, I must also see Rome. So he sent into Macedonia two of those who ministered to him, Timothy and Erastus, but he himself stayed in Asia for a time. Paul <coughs> purposed in the Spirit. Have you ever purposed to do something? It means you were intentional. You were missional. No one had to remind you of what you were all about or what you were going to do. And Paul, upon these missionary journeys, was not just like a tourist. How many of you have ever been a tourist? Traveling. Oh, isn't that a pretty building? Look at that landscape. That ocean looks beautiful. I love to go to the ocean. That ocean looked beautiful. All those mountains. No, that wasn't Paul. Paul was purposefully, intentionally, missionally spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's nothing wrong with being a tourist. But when it comes to doing the work of God, you've got to have a purpose and a mission. You've got to be intentional. Look at your neighbor and say, you've got to be intentional. So Paul purposed not just enjoying the scenery, but he was on assignment. 
And what does it tell us? Paul could not go to Macedonia right then, so he sent two other people. I'm going to call them fire starters. He sent two other fire starters to two other areas, two other regions while he stayed in Asia because he had a purpose. He was intent. He was there to do a work and it had not yet been completed, so he was intentional and missionary. I want to read one more uh, set of scriptures, Acts chapter 20, and then we're going, to, we're going to tie all this together. Acts chapter 20, verse 18 through 21. It says, and they, when they had come to him, he said to them, You know, from the first day that I came into Asia, in what manner I always lived among you. You know, let me say that, you know, from the very first day that I came into Asia, in what manner I lived among you. Serving the Lord with all humility, with many tears and trials. There's the persecution. There's the opposition. Which happened to me by the plotting of the Jews. Wait a minute. Paul was a Jew. You mean his own people came against him? Absolutely. You see, when you begin to do the work of God, those sometimes, hopefully not many times, but sometimes those who call themselves a Christian may not like what you're doing. <coughs> may not uh, think it's of God. May, may think it's uh, uh, something that it ought not to be. But he was serving the Lord with humility and tears and trials, which happened to him by the plotting of the Jews. How I kept back nothing. Look at your neighbor and say, I kept back nothing. I kept back nothing that was helpful, but proclaimed it to you and taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying to the Jews, also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, he wasn't just doing something to do something. He was preaching and teaching repentance and faith toward God. That sounds like the gospel, doesn't it? He was spreading the gospel. Right. But Paul says this, from the very first day that you knew me, you knew my business. Now sometimes we don't like people to know our business. But Paul said, you don't have to worry about it to me. You know what business I'm about. I'm about preaching and teaching the Word of God. I'm about spreading the gospel. I'm about uh, praying for the sick and then getting healed. I'm about uh, laying hands upon someone and then being filled with the Holy Spirit and speaking with other, other tongues. You, you see, uh, there was no question about what Paul was about. Can the same thing be said of us? Do you know what I'm all about from the very first time that you met me? He didn't have to, uh, uh, they didn't have to guess. He said, I'm here to tell people about Jesus. I'm here to prove that Jesus is the Messiah. I haven't changed. I haven't got sidetracked. I've got one thing and one message. Tell me, and one goal. I've, I've been set on a target. I'm not deviating from the course. I've kept the faith, and I'm doing what God has called me to do. Amen. You see, in order to accomplish something, you got to keep the main thing. The main thing. Right? And Paul said there's been a lot of opposition. They tried to stone me. They did stone me outside the city, but God raised him up. They tried to sabotage me, beat me on multiple occasions, put me in prison, but I have not let that stop me. I'm still preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Here today, I want to encourage you. You are going to face opposition, but don't you let that stop you from doing what God has called you to do, to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in your home, in your community, like the block part, uh, party, uh, in uh, the grocery store. You can't get out of there less than an hour anyway. You might as well tell somebody about Jesus. Uh, uh, and, and all throughout the community, you know, we're to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
Now, don't be so pushy about it that they run from you and hide in the next aisle. <laughs> but let the Holy Spirit lead you. God, and carry on a natural conversation. And, and you ought to be so much about what Jesus is doing in your heart and life that it just comes out and it just bubbles over and it just flows. You know what I'm talking about, folks? And, and so uh, don't make people guess what you're about. Make the main thing the main thing. Hallelujah. Not only that, but Paul said, if I had to give, I held back nothing. I gave it for the purpose of the kingdom. I found a way, either through my abilities or my possessions, to make sure that the gospel of Jesus Christ was being advanced. So how was the early church keeping this fire going? How did it never die out? How did it never deplete? How did they remain so passionate and so invigorated about their cause and their mission? How is it that we're still sitting here today, 2,000 years later, still talking about the same gospel, the same yeah. Jesus yeah. that died on the yeah. cross for us, the yeah. same Jesus that rose on the third day, the yeah. same Jesus yeah. that 40 days later ascended into heaven, yeah. and, and yeah. the angel said, why do you stand here gazing? Yeah. You've been told to go to Jerusalem and to wait on the power of God that you might be my witnesses. That's right. Amen. You see, this thing hasn't died out. We've been talking about 20, 25 years. This thing hasn't died out for over 2,000 years. Right. That means it's a divine, heavenly power. Hallelujah. Fire yes. that no man can put out. Yes. Because it is the gospel of yes. Jesus Christ. Do yes. you, you feel the power in that today? It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. So what enabled them to keep going to keep carrying this fire, to keep facing opposition, the key, the effective thing is that they kept the main thing, the main thing. Say it again. They kept the main thing, the main thing. Now, why do I say that? Because there's power in keeping the main thing, the main thing. Oh, I'm sorry, I misplaced it. I think this is uh, Daniela's and Lydia's. We got a brand new baby here today. Sometimes we have a tendency to get distracted. Anybody ever seen a rattler that you give to your kids? And they like to shake it? And they like, because what you can do with a rattler is if that baby needs to have that pacifier taken out of his mouth, or if that baby needs to have the bottle taken out of his mouth for just a second, you can shake that rattler, and you can distract that baby, and you can take away everything. You can change that baby's diaper, and it's just like, isn't that neat? Isn't that cool? What is that thing? How would I? The enemy also likes to distract yeah. 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 and take away Everything good that God wants to give you. Don't be distracted. Don't be discouraged. Don't let the enemy... See, I should have kept shaking that because the baby would have liked it. <laughs> you, you see, you can hold up something sparkly and the enemy does that. And as long as that sparkly thing is there then the devil can distract us. And the bad thing about the church being distracted is that they forget, the church forgets why we're here. Hmm. This right here, these four walls, this beautiful sanctuary, carpets, uh, singing, it's not all, that's not all the church is about. As you... Uh, discovered, many, many of you have helped many, many times, but it's about getting outside the four walls of the church and meeting people where they are and ministering to them where they are and praying for them and asking them, uh, is there a, a way that we can help you? 
You, you see, don't let the enemy distract you from what you have been created for. Church, let's not let the enemy distract us to think it's just all about us. Look at your neighbor and say, it's not all about us. Oh. It is about you, but not just about you. Amen? And so while the church was supposed to be winning the lost, many times the devil has slipped in with something shiny and got them distracted. And they forgot what they were there to begin with. Now, I wasn't planning on doing this, but since we sang the song anyway, uh, we sang a song about worship. And how worship has been become so many things other than just about Jesus. Right. Yeah. We, we sang that song, Lord, forgive me for what I've made it. When it's all about you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You see, when we come into this place and when we come together and outside of here, it's all about Jesus. And certainly when we come for worship, it's all about Jesus. It's about lifting Him up and praising Him and, and uh, moving when the Holy Spirit says move and praying for people and allowing God to touch hearts and lives. It's all about Jesus. Yes, Say that with me. It's all about Jesus. Oh, it's all about Him. And when we begin to worship, there's such power in worshiping. But sometimes we've made it about, forgive me, is it about the hymns or is it about contemporary? Is it about Southern Gospel? No, it's about Jesus. Right? It's about lifting Him up. As a matter of fact, it's good for us every once in a while to experience a different kind of worship. A different kind of song. I love to go to Hispanic service and, and, and I don't understand all the words, but I sure get the feel of it and I sure get the uh, anointing of it and I experience it in a new way and it's a different sound and it lifts me up because uh, it's all about Jesus. It's not just about me. All right. So don't get distracted when we sing songs that you don't like. <laughs> And don't get overwhelmed if we sing songs that you do like. Why? It's not about the song. It's about Jesus. Amen? That was free because I wouldn't go put that in there. Church, at the end of the day, if this church or any church is not bringing people to faith in Christ, if we're not being anything but a social club, having fried chicken dinners, then we failed our assignment. Right. If people aren't coming to the altars and finding Jesus as their personal sin, if we're not taking the gospel to the ends of the earth with our mission programs, if we're not building, hear me, and starting other churches, then we have no purpose for being here. We have to get back to making the main thing right. the main thing. Yeah. Read your neighbor say, keep the main thing the main thing. Yeah. We got to keep the, the, the main message, the main message that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever uh, uh, would, will would, uh, yeah. can repent and come to know Jesus as a personal Savior. Uh, we got we to gotta keep that main message the main message. Yeah. Whoever believes in Him will not perish, but have everlasting life. You have a hope inside of you that the world needs to know about. Amen. The message of the Gospel. As a matter of fact, the only reason why most of us sit here inside of a comfortable church, knowing that we've been saved and filled with the Holy Spirit, is because somebody helped me. Some church somewhere got excited about Jesus. And they kept the main thing, the main thing. And you heard the gospel, and now you sit in church, and your family, many of them are saved because somebody got serious about keeping the main thing, the main thing. Look at your name say, say it's about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. See, spreading the gospel is a demand, not an option. 
right. You see that? Spreading the gospel, it's a commandment, not an option. That's what God's called us to do. That's our purpose. That's our destiny. Amen. And look at that. You got a match, and now the flames follow. One person, here's how it works for us. One person gets saved, gets touched by God, and it begins to spread to a neighbor, to a friend, to a family member, and all of a sudden we got all kinds of people who are spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we're not only just changing a little church, but we're changing uh, a community, and we're changing a region, and we're changing uh, uh, just the world. We're turning it upside down as it goes from one person to the next to the next. Grab your neighbor by the hand. Let's do this together. Just Donnie, you grab everybody. Wink, 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 wink. <coughs> now pray with me. Father God, let this gospel spread from me to every person I know. Whether it's my home, my work, people I see in the community. Let them come to know you as Savior because I have been obedient and I have also caught fire. I believe it in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, when we begin to profess God's will, it begins to happen in our life. Hallelujah. We're, we're able to, to to change people's destinies, people's lives by the power of the gospel. The anointing and the power of the gospel. You see, I don't know about you, but I have been given a mandate by God, and I believe that you have too, to not allow this gospel to just stay in this generation and not to spread to the next. It's a mandate. It's something inside of my heart that I cannot get away from. Legacy, spreading the gospel from one generation to another. Teresa, would you come to the piano? You see, what I want you to understand today is that the gospel of the book of Acts, I should say, is still being written. One of the few books that does not end with Amen. Why? It ain't over till it's over. It ain't over till it's over. The Holy Spirit is still working and generation after generation of people are hopefully being won by the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm going to wrap this up. How did the early church keep the main thing, the main thing? Three things. They stayed focused on the mission. Amen. You have a mission in this life. You are not an accident. God created you and allowed you to be born on purpose. Don't you believe the lie of the devil that says that you wouldn't have made any difference if you were born. Every, I heard it said today, Martha said it, every person is important. Every person is important. And you have a mission, a life goal. And they did not get distracted, number two. They did not get distracted. They did not let into detours or disruptions or discouragement from sharing and showing Jesus to every person they came in contact with. The enemy. Wants to distract you. Don't you let him. How do you keep from getting distracted by the enemy? Turn. It's an old hymn. Turn your eyes. Upon Jesus. Amen. Look full at his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Look at your neighbor say, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Don't get distracted. Don't get discouraged. Number three, and they kept back nothing that was profitable or useful for the spreading of the gospel. What does that mean? They valued reaching the spiritually lost 
and the hurting more than their money or their possessions. Can I tell you something? Every outreach we do, we don't make money on any of them. That's not what it's about. It's about Jesus. It's about reaching people for Jesus. It's about getting people involved in the kingdom of God and using their time and their talent and their treasure so that more people know Jesus Christ. And we don't make money on it. It's not the purpose. As a matter of fact, we almost all of us give in some way time, talent, treasure. Yeah. But we're making a difference, folks. Hallelujah. We're making a difference in this community, in this world. We're touching lives. We're changing destinies through the power of the Holy Spirit. Don't you forget that. Don't you forget that. And they gave, they kept back nothing. They kept back nothing. You see, there's nothing wrong with having things. You heard this said. But it's really bad when things have you. Amen. That's the truth. So if God tells you to give a thing, or money, or time, or your talent, don't you forget where that all came from. All right, right, because it was God Almighty who gave it to you at the very beginning. Right. Who gave you the wisdom and the knowledge to, to, to work and to start businesses and, and to excel uh, wherever you have been and, and whatever you have done. It is God uh, who made a way where there seemed to be no way. Come on, I'm preaching right now. Uh, and so don't you hold back anything. I'm not saying that because I want it to come in and the church needs it. No, I'm saying it because it will bless you when you begin to realize that all I have and all that I am, it came.